Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well it's time to get started on our pre-amplifier build. And this is a clone of a older Conrad Johnson pre-amplifier that ZeroZone actually makes a pre-built one. But we decided to build one ourselves. And so before we get into this though, if you want to know where you can get one of these chassis, I have no idea. This was one I found on eBay. The seller had two left. Not sure you'll be able to find one exactly like this. But anything that's the interior dimensions are seven inches by like 11 and a quarter. And anything around there, it could be, as you can see, there's some room on the sides. It could be a little narrower. It could be a little longer. It could be a tad shorter. I think you could get by maybe with a 10 inch, but this is a good size. So in building this, I decided to push the board as far forward as I could. And to do so, I had to really watch the clearance between this volume pot and the board. There's probably only 30 or 40 thousandths between the bottom of this volume pot and this board. These Alps Blue Velvet pots are a little bigger. If you wanted to give yourself a little more room, an audio note one is a lot more compact and also is high quality, but they're also a lot more expensive. So these Blue Velvets are a very common one, so we went with that. The had to actually uh, file down the bottom of this flat and trim these two resistors ha are going to have to go on the underside and trimmed them off really close to get enough clearance for this pot. This cap and this cap are going to have to go on the underside. And one of the reasons that I had to space the board up as high as I did is I want to try a couple of these orange drop caps for the input and they're going to have to go on the underside. So there needs to be enough room for them to fit underneath there and they will just barely fit. So it's going to be a tight fit, but we're going to get that to fit. You can also see here that the, let me slide this up. I think there's plenty of room here between the tube and the volume pot. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly tight fit, but it's not, you know, I don't think the tube's going to melt this and these tubes aren't going to be running that hot anyway. So I'm comfortable with it being there, but hey, we'll see what happens, right? The other thing I want to show you is what I did with this um, power switch. So let me zoom in here. The power switch came where with, it didn't come with these little spacers, these longer bolts, and the, the button stuck way out in the front. And I wanted it to go like this and be fairly flush. And so I got a couple of these aluminum spacers and some longer bolts and spaced this out so that the volume, or not the volume, but the, the power button will look more like that. I think that looks a lot nicer than sticking way out. So that was one of the little things we did on this case. The other thing that really worked out well was these are the heat sinks for the uh, MOSFET and the voltage regulator for the um, 6.3 volts. And they make a nice shield between the power supply and the signal side of the preamp. And these get soldered to the board to ground. And so these will be a nice grounded shield between the, the noise of the power supply and the transformer and the signal side of the preamp. Here's the transformer we're going to be using. And it's going to sit back here like this. And I'm going to mount it on 
Let me, let me zoom in here. I'm going to mount it on these little rubber mounts. They got a stud on one side, and this little bolt will come in from the bottom. These are your basic little rubber isolator mounts. And they're not real soft, but they will help reduce the any kind of noise this transformer might make getting transferred to the chassis. And then on one of the legs, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to have a little solder lug like this on it so that I can ground the body of the transformer. There's a copper shield that goes around all the windings that is tied to this. So I want to make sure that I ground this to the chassis. It also has an internal shield wire that I'm assuming helps keep the AC noise from spreading throughout the device. So we're going to be grounding that too. These are going to be our power leads. These go to the uh, 110. And then we're going to have the back plate put like this. And so the AC will go you know, straight from here over to here. And then we'll likely tie down a ground somewhere in here to ground the, you know, to put the safety ground from our power connector. And then these power wires are all coming over here. And this transformer was listed as being for this device. And it looks perfect. It's got, you know, two different sets of uh, 220 volts, and then it's got two separate heater wire things that come over here to the amp. So, seems like an ideal power transformer. Again, we're going to put the back plate like this with our RCA jacks over here on this side. We're going to run our, these are going to be our inputs, and I'm planning on running these up kind of high across here and then down to the volume pot, and I might glue a couple of little pieces of plastic strips to kind of be stands for the RCA cable across here so that it's you know up off the board and away from the power supply and get it up here in this upper corner as high as we can get it. And this is a clamshell type case that like the other side of it looks like this. So they're both equally about that deep, and it splits in the middle. What's going to work out well is, and I'll have to take this off. Let me go ahead and get rid of this for now, too. When you, we put this down, the heat sinks for those um, solid state MOSFET and the voltage regulator are right under these vents in the center. So you can see they're almost perfectly under the center of it. So that's going to really help that cool. I was hoping that the tubes were going to be able to sit inside, but they're not going to be able to. They're going to have to stick up through the top. And that's another reason that I spaced this up is if I'm going to have the tube stick out through the top, I want it to stick out a little, you know, not just like, I don't want like that much sticking out. I want about, you know, that much of the tube sticking out. I think we're gonna end up with something about like that, somewhere between there and there, of the tube sticking out of the top. So we're gonna have to measure and mark off four holes to put in the top. And this time I'm gonna try something a little different than I've done in the past. Given this is a little thicker material, somebody sent me this the little step drill kit off Amazon. And I know this obviously isn't a super high quality one, but I think given this is soft metal and it's three millimeters thick, I think this big step drill will work great for punching the tube holes. The other thing we're gonna do this time, and I saw this tip on DIY audio, is I got these little grommet they're one inch grommet for like a canvas fabric and I think these will look really nice as the decorative edges to the holes so if they're not drilled perfect 
Doesn't matter. We're going to be trimming them anyway. And I also wanted to push the board this way enough so that these rings wouldn't be overlapping or getting too close to these vents. And they're going to sit kind of like that. So we've got a, a nice gap of the edge of this ring to this vent system in the top. So I think it's going to really come out looking really cool. The RCA is going to come around here to the volume pot. Then the volume pot just drops down right here. This is the input. That's the line in. So it's going to be super Super short little jump from, from there over to here. And then the line out is here in the center of the board. And I'm going to run these like that direction over and then to these RCAs in the back. And I think I said in an earlier video, I'm thinking about do, uh, putting a sub out jacks on the back of this and maybe have a switch where you can choose between whether you want to do a sub out or not. And given that this is going to be a higher voltage signal, I'm not as concerned about having some stuff, you know, in some circuitry, probably going to be some point to point stuff over in this little corner of the amplifier that would be the sub out circuitry. And then come to these two RCA jacks in the back. And there's plenty of room over here for this. So, I think this little case is going to work out great. As you can see, I've already, let me get this out of the way. As you can see, I've gone ahead and populated a lot of this board with the uh, resistors. And, but I wanted to like figure out where I'm going to put all the components and how I'm going to bolt this thing down before I started soldering too many things in. For example, I'm going to have to put this capacitor and this capacitor on the underside as well as this one and this one. The rest of them can go in the top. I don't think there's going to be any problem. I want to go ahead and mark the measure and mark off the holes for the tubes in the top part and get those drilled and then work on populating up this board. Again, like I said in a couple of videos, I don't think I'm going to just do like a solder joint by solder joint on this build. I think it's going to be more of this style of video where I'm going to show you how I've done some things and given that this isn't a chassis that you're probably going to be able to find an identical one from. You're going to have to, you know, do some creative stuff to get this to fit in whatever chassis you can find. I'm sure you could put it like in a Hammond chassis or some other stuff, but I just thought this one looked, you know, I think this is going to look really nice on the front. And it came with this volume, this matching volume knob. And it's just going to be a nice looking preamp, I think. So, because the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run some wires up here to this power switch. And that's why we're going to run the signal over here on this side. And then we're going to run a twisted wire up to here. And again, I'm probably going to come up with some kind of, you know, little plastic strips or something that I can use for stands for these wires on both sides so I can get these away from the board and get them up higher in the in the chassis and then run these across over and down and keep these the 110 AC away from the signal path as much as possible but I do want this to be an easy to use device with the switch on the front and the volume control on the front and so gonna see how this thing turns out so I think I'm going to work on the chassis some go ahead and populate up the board and then come back and show you what that looks like and how I'm going to run the RCA wires from the back to the front and all that kind of stuff. Again, if you really want to see a detailed build of a circuit board type preamp project, 
go look at all, go watch the videos for the photo stage. The populating this board really isn't going to be any different than that project was. But like I said, once I get done populating it, I'll show you like where I've mounted some components that may not be in their normal location to get it to fit in this layout. And then again, your chassis is probably going to be different than this one I found. So that's one of the things about DIY is sometimes you just look up and find some cool chassis like this that'll fit your project perfect and you're not going to be able to ever find another one maybe. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe to the video, get updates on this build, and we'll see you real soon for some more stereo preamplifier fun. Have a great day.